I'm Jen Stringfellow, SCR's Scenic Charge Artist. What does a Scenic Charge Artist do? Let me first start by telling you what a Scenic Artist is because there's often some confusion. You know, why aren't we called set painters? Because that's, that's what we do. Um, we are more than set painters. We are artists. We have to have a lot more knowledge to be an artist. We have to be more skilled than um, just your average painter. We need to be able to sculpt things. We need to be able to lay things out, cartoon things, um, have this knowledge of really a full spectrum of skills. And for that reason, we like to call ourselves scenic artists as opposed to scenic painters. So let me go back to what a scenic charge artist is. And uh, essentially it's my job to direct the two full-time scenic artists that SCR employs. And I will talk to the designer about how we're gonna give them their vision, what they're looking for exactly. We'll go through the process of making samples that I will provide and deciding on what kind of tools we're gonna use. And then I will direct my staff to execute uh, those plans. Who decides how scenery gets painted in relation to colors, textures, and finishes? And ultimately, it's a collaborative effort between the designer and myself. Um, it's the designer's vision, for sure, so they're the final say in everything, but I'm the one who's going to be making the choices as to how we're achieving those textures and exactly what materials we're using to get us there. So question three regards what materials I use. It could be any number of things. Um, we don't always just stick to using your standard paint tools like your rollers and your brushes and your trays. We take whatever we can get that's going to give us the desired result and that's kind of the more fun parts of my job is making all these very specific tools for these shows um, out of anything I can find. Uh, for example, if you guys remember the um, King's Floor, it had to look like the Senate rug and it had this very specific pattern that we made a stamp for. Now, I'll probably never get a use out of that stamp again, but that's something we made for that show, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that we are doing for every single show at SCR. It's actually kind of funny to a lot of people uh, what I can use as a paint tool. I use everything from straw brooms, window mops, feather dusters even. Um, if you guys have seen Outside Bolengar, I made a texture recipe and I use kitty litter in that texture recipe. The non-clumping kind, because the clumping kind doesn't work well with paint. But I use kitty litter for those textures and those are things that I'm, I have to discover for every show what's gonna work best. How did I train for my career? And there's not one path to becoming a scenic artist. You can go to trade school, you can get a certificate in scenic art, you can uh, study at an apprenticeship and do it the old fashioned way and just surround yourself with people who know more than you. Or you can do the most expensive option, which is go to college, which is what I did. I went to school in Ohio, I'm from Boston. I went to the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. I studied scenic design and scenic art, and it was a really great experience for me. I learned a lot. Um, unlike other programs, the conservatory program is very specific. So uh, most schools, you're, you'll major in theater or theater production, where at CCM, where I went, you can actually study specifically set design, scenic art, you can study wig and makeup design, you can study sound design, you can study lighting design. Um, all those options are there and they immerse you really, really heavily in exactly what you're doing. And it was exactly what I needed for my training. So subsequently on my summers off from college, I was doing a summer stocks, which if you don't know what a summer stock is, it's a summer theater festival that is very fast paced. They cram a lot of shows into like three months and it's basically summer boot camp for everyone working there. And so I did a few of those. I did Williamstown Theater Festival, which is a big one. Um, I did Virginia Shakespeare Festival. Uh, once I graduated from college, I got hired at a set fabrication shop in Cincinnati where um, we mostly did cruise ship scenery um, for like World Caribbean and Holland America, which was really fun. But they also had a fiberglass shop there where um, I learned how to fiberglass. We did most of the yogi bears, like the big 10 foot tall yogi bears for the Jellystone parks around the country and all those Frisch's big boys that are outside all of the burger joints. Um, I think in California, they're called Bob's big boys, but either way, um, I did all those, I repaired all of those. 
Um, so that was a really fun learning experience for me for new materials. And I feel like things are always like that. Like there, there will always be things that I don't know and I can learn to use for my, my field. What is the most incredible outlandish or challenging project you've ever worked on? And going back to that place where I worked on cruise ships, um, I remember we were doing a show for Royal Caribbean. Um, it was called The Gift and it involved a proscenium that looked like uh, it was just a bunch of vines entangled together. And when you do uh, scenery for cruise ships, you kind of have to figure out a way that it's gonna last 15 or 20 years if, if they wanna keep recycling this set um, because they pay a lot of money for these sets. And so what we decided is we would make all these vines out of PVC pipe, but we, you know, you've seen PVC, they're, they're pretty straight uh, pieces of plastic. So it was my job to take a turkey roaster essentially an open flame. And I had to roast these pipes like marshmallows over this open flame and twist them into vine-like shapes for weeks on weeks on weeks on weeks on weeks. And then we would combine them all together and we fiberglassed all the joints and it looked great, but it was it was such a process. I'm just, I'm just gonna add one, one more in here. There's a lot, but um, if any of you guys saw Viet Gone, uh, four or five years ago, um, there was a point where there was a big billboard and it, it just needed something. So it was my job, I had to make a fake bird poop formula that, that was thick and uh, dribble it over the billboard. So essentially I, I was putting bird poop all over the set. Okay, so what is your favorite faux painting or finishing technique? I have, I kind of have two for this one. Um, I really excel at marble. If you've seen marble in the past five years at SCR, I'm probably the one that's done that. Here's a little insider tip. Uh, for the veining, we, we like to use feathers. Y you get a uh, variation with the feather because it's got some kind of give to it rather than a paintbrush. Um, and it just makes things a little less predictable, which is exactly what marble is. And then my other one is really intense wood grain. Uh, kind of like Sweeney Todd. So if you saw the Sweeney Todd floor, the grain, the designer John Iacovelli, he wanted that really, um, not cartoonish, but he wanted it really exaggerated and larger. So we ended up making by hand these large graining tools out of PVC and foam. And we still use those today for other shows, um, but that, that floor turned out gorgeous. What are you working on right now? In terms of personal projects, I hate to say that I'm working on nothing, but I'm really working on nothing. Um, I've been really enjoying not being in paint clothes. Uh, it's very different for me. Like this fuzzy thing would be all crusty if I ever wore it in the paint shop. Um, and I get to wear it now, which is great. It's really comfortable. As far as um, what I'm working on in general is for next season, I'm doing a lot of planning. I'm reading all the scripts for next year. You guys should be really excited. Uh, 39 Steps was a favorite. That, that's a really solid show. You should be excited for that. Okay, so if you weren't a theater pro, what occupation would you have and why? And I kind of always knew I was gonna be somewhere in the arts from a young age. Um, I think my mom knew that way before I even did. But um, the only other thing that comes to mind is in middle school, I was pretty much a little wannabe astronomer. I uh, carried my astronomy book everywhere. Uh, completely unrelated, but I, I looked the part too. I had a back brace, braces, and Coke bottle glasses. Uh, I read the whole astronomy book in like a week. Um, I would come home and I'd watch the science channel every day. Uh, and then someone told me uh, how much math was involved if I was gonna be an astronomer. And I think that's when I realized that that probably wasn't gonna be uh, an option for me for the future. Any recommendations for reading, viewing, or activities for us during the stay-at-home order? And I don't have a lot, but I have a couple things. So um, here in my Kindle that's 10 years old, and uh, surprisingly, this button just decided to stop working yesterday. I've been reading uh, the Witcher series, which is what the Netflix show and all the games are based off of. Um, it's really interesting because it's been translated from Polish. Also in terms of activities, I kind of just want to add that um, just call someone, check in on them, see how they're doing. Uh, you know, we're all kind of going through it in our own way. 
My mom is a charge nurse at a major Boston hospital and I know she's going through it right now. My brother just got hired to a COVID unit. Uh, so uh, just check in on your family and friends, uh, connect. Like that's use this time for something good. I also wanna make sure I shout out to um, all my coworkers who are at home making masks. I'm not able to make masks here at home. Uh, they're like, they're rock stars. Anyone making masks right now, you guys are rock stars. And my mom, I am so proud of her for being a charge nurse and just a nurse in general. But uh, when she's not working right now, which is a lot, she's coming home on her free time and she's making masks. Uh, and she mailed me this mask. I know you guys are gonna make fun of me. But I just, I just shout out to all you guys trying to help. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been Me to Theater Pro. I'm Jen Stringfellow and uh, I'm SCR Senior Charge Artist. I hope you enjoyed that.